Church that said praise the Lord. We're going to we're going to ask Evangelist Calvin to be prepared to lead us to the throne of grace. We want to pray that God's will will be done and that he will stretch forth his hand and bless those who are in need of help. We have many names on these prayer lists and we want you to pray that God will bless them and strengthen them in their hour of need. Let us pray for the continued uh, strength and growth of our church. Let us earnestly pray that the Lord will bless us as we are winding down on the building of our new church edifice. And in a very few weeks, we will be going into our new church. Let us pray that God will be with us as we close out this long period of construction. Let us pray that God will bless us in every way and that many souls will continue to be one to Christ and his people will be strengthened. Evangelist Calvin. Praise the Lord. Let me hear a pray. Oh, eternal God, Lord, we just come thanking you today for your goodness. Lord, we just come thanking you for your mercy. Lord, we ask you to remember every name that's written here on this prayer list. Oh, God, you know the need. You know the trouble, the aches and the pains, God. Oh, God, we ask you to touch and heal sick bodies. Oh, God, raise up those who are oppressed today, those who are depressed. Oh, God, bless, touch, and strengthen your people today, Lord. Oh, God, there's many in the audience, Lord. Oh, God, that are going through personal trials and afflictions. Oh, God, raise them up, God. Oh, God, encourage their heart. Build them up, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, in advance, because we know that you're faithful. Oh, God, and we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Our responsive reading will be taken from St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Will the congregation please repeat after me? Let not, Let not your, heart be troubled. your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it, were not so, if it were not so, I would have told you. I, told you. I, go, to I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, will come again. And, receive you and receive you unto myself. That where, I am, that where I am, there ye may, there ye may be, also. be also. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. When he comes back, we shall meet again, oh Lord. When he comes back, oh when he comes back, we shall meet again. We may not know the day or the hour. We shall meet again. But it's Come again 
Because I am the way, the truth, and the light. I'll take all my believers to a city where there'll be no more misery and strife. We shall be changed in a moment, changed in a moment, oh, in the blink of an eye. When it comes back, when it comes back, oh, Lord.
turn on Satan's for the things God has done. Things so That he gave to prove his love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express.
for a good thing.
what he was going to try to say, I tied it for myself. When nothing else could help. Somebody said, try Jesus. All right, I did. I tried him for myself. We thank you to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a great big hand. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say thank you, Jesus. Let the church say praise the Lord. We are thankful to God. We want to thank our choir, our director, our soloists, and all of it choir members for the great musicians for the great songs of inspiration one song there was it is well with my soul and followed by that song I've tried him for myself so I feel really feel moved this morning because singing is a part of our worship and it's just a but it's been a part of God, of God's people's worship down through the ages. And we just thank him to the Lord for it. And now the time has come for us to turn to the word of the Lord. I am going to revisit a passage of scripture this morning. Uh, in the 8th chapter yes, sir. of the gospel according to the Apostle Paul, not, I'm sorry, gospel, the, the, the book of Romans, I'm sorry, the book of Romans chapter 8. I have a subject today, groundless fear. Groundless, groundless fear. I felt led of the Lord to revisit this subject because 
There's so much fear in this world today. Fear of everything. And I'm struck by the amount of fear that I find among God's people wherever I go. It's something that I have been preaching about for years. And I believe that I have been a help to a lot of people. I watched over the years, I watched thousands of people come to Christ. Thousands. Come down these aisles and watched them as they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I've watched you as you start out as babes in Christ. And I've watched you as you as you as you grown in grace. And that's been a great privilege that I've had. Uh, a great blessing that the Lord gave me to be a part of such a great work and to see the hand of God as he's worked. I started out, my first pastorate, well, 40 years ago, I, if I had 20 people on Easter, I had a crowd. Easter. Sister Brazier, my wife and I, members of the same church. She never was a preacher. Thank God for that. <laughs> but she's been by my side for 40 years. We're celebrating our uh, 44th wedding anniversary. This month, February the 21st. I to stand up, Sister Brady. Let the world see you. My wife over there. <laughs> yeah. Very happy. We're thankful to God for her. Yeah. There's so many people today are afraid of life. And I guess that there are some things we need to be afraid of. Yes. And so my subject today is not fear. It's groundless fear. Groundless fear. I want to see you be strong in God. There's no reason for you not to be. And I want to just lay this out for you. There's two things. God's power has been given to you. I don't mean God's creative power, obviously, obviously. But the Holy Ghost means that you have power. The Holy Ghost, listen to me now, the Holy Ghost is not some kind of energy. Yes, sir. It's, the Holy Ghost is not divine energy. The Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost was divine energy, the Holy Ghost would be an it. So often we use the word it when we're talking about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost is not an it. The Holy Ghost is he. When he, the spirit, is truth, is come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. When he is come, he. Uh, there's, one, there's a passage here that I'm going to read uh, where the Holy Spirit is, is referred to as it. It referred to here, and the only place in the Bible where it said the spirit itself. But that's only because the translators followed the uh, syntax slavishly. Instead of saying himself, it said itself. But that's because of Greek syntax. But the Holy Spirit is, is he. It's God. And, and you are the, the temple of God. And the Holy Ghost is in you. And you have the power. The problem is not the power. The problem is performance. 
power do you perform? You have the power. And, and, and God is expecting. And I am expecting. And the world is expecting. That you rise to the occasion. When people expect little, you get little. That's the problem in our schools. A lot of teachers don't expect nothing from their pupils. But then there are teachers who expect something. And when you expect something, the, the, the pupil deliver. So I want to read this text. Chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. It says something about who you are. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And let the people say amen. amen. What an exhilarating passage. When one reads this, as I, and, and I am drawn to it time and time again, one begins to get a glimpse of who we are. And the reason I, I want to emphasize that is because there, there, there are people here who have not yet really received Christ, really have not been born again, really have not been baptized in the name of Jesus. And very often, the reason for that is groundless fear. I want you to know what God does with you and what God can do for you. And those of you who are already saved, I, I want you to feel certain and sure about what you've gotten yourself into. Uh, I'm not talking about cultism this morning. I'm talking about New Testament Christian. And this book of Romans is a, is a doctrinal masterpiece. This book lays out the doctrine of salvation by faith and by grace alone. It's a mysterious book in many ways. Because it, it, it goes into this mystical, this deep realm of predestination, foreknowledge, being called. And two, uh, verses 9 through chapters 9 through 11 speak of, of, of the call that God has made to, to Israel and how Israel rejected Christ. And then Paul says something very mysterious, mind-boggling. He says uh, there in one verse, in chapter, uh, I believe it was in chapter 11. 
And verse 7, listen to this. Well, maybe I ought to read up on verse 6. You know, I always say that. You know. Paul writes. He said, and if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. My Lord and my God. And the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. But look what he says in verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Look, at, look how God's working here. Look how God's working here. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. In other words, if the fall of Israel is to our riches, what will be our blessing when God brings them back in again? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I can't deal with that today. It's just too much for me. Let me go back to this text. This well-reasoned expression of, of, the, of the work and person of our Lord. It's awesome. Yes. Riveting. And lift one's soul yes, to dazzling heights of joy and exaltation. Look in this text again. There, there, there are two words in this text that go together. Bondage and fear. And then there are two phrases that go together. Spirit of adoption and the children of God. Fear is bondage. Fear is slavery. But you know what Jesus said? He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you leave here this morning, I want you to leave here with the joy of, soul, the joy of God in your heart. And then if you are not, you're here and you're not saved today, don't leave this building until you can baptize in Jesus' name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. God brought you here. Oh, so well, I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. Listen, listen, my friend. Yes, if you stay the way you are, yes, you, ought to, you, you have every right to be afraid you won't be able to make it because you'll be trying to make it on your own. But no child of God, no one who has ever been born again needs to live in fear. And since we are the children of God, how is it that we live, some of us, how is it that some of us live in fear of almost everything? And especially when the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now, if God has not given us the spirit of fear, why do you so you live in such such fear? Yes, sir. Why are you so afraid of the devil? Tell me why. I don't understand it. I don't understand how those of you who tell me that God has all power and that you have the Holy Ghost why is it that some of you are always afraid that the devil is going to get the advantage of you somebody said well if you, if you don't stay close to God he will get the advantage of you yeah but who helps you stay close to God uh, who lifts you up when you fall does God abandon you or when you are in trouble does the Holy Ghost get back and let you fend for yourself when my children were in trouble, I was there to help them. When my children are in difficulty, I'm there to help them. 
I, I do not flee for my children when they are in need. I do, I, I do not turn for my children when they are, 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 are have, have a need for my help. I'm there. If, if we who are, who are normally and naturally evil, preach. I said normally and naturally so, huh? and we take care of our children, how much more will God take care of you and look at the love of God we are his children by adoption we have been adopted oh, my good friend Bishop Ellis over there praise the Lord we have been adopted into the family you are, you, you are, you are not a natural uh, uh, child of God you are adopted you are a child of adoption and yet God loves you why are you afraid now that you have been brought out of darkness why are you still trembling in fear now I, I must say I, I, I believe that there are some healthy fears we ought to have uh, I think Paul wrote to, to, to Timothy and told him say flee fornication run and you don't think you can beat the devil now you know Say, well, I can, I can do all this, and I can get this, and I can do that. I got the Holy Ghost. You, I'm going to go out to take the dinner, and, and then after we come dinner, we, we're going to bring this young lady back to my apartment. And we, all we're going to sit there, and we're just going to talk about the Lord. We're just going to turn, out the, turn the lights down low, and we're going to put on some soft music. And we're going to sit on this love couch, and we're going to talk about the Lord. Come on, brothers and sisters. Who do you think you are kidding? Who, who do you... Who do you think you are kidding? Well, I'm going to go here. He invited me over to his apartment. I'm just going to go over there. And, and all we're going to do, I'm going to try to win him to Christ. Get off of it. <laughs> That's why some folk get in so much trouble. Because you, 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 you're, you're walking too close to the world. So there are some things we ought to be afraid of, right? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about groundless fears. We ought to be afraid of fire. We ought to be afraid of lightning. We ought to be afraid of making reckless decisions. Yes, these are some things we ought to be afraid of. But there are some things that we just build up in our own imagination. And there are people who find themselves... I'm talking about saints of God right now who find themselves victims of almost every kind of calamity. They, if they're not worrying about one thing, they're worrying about another. They take small molehills and build them into huge mountains. Little rivulets are magnified into swollen, raging rivers. They worried about their children, they worry about their job, they worry about their health. And they see a demon behind every doorpost. <laughs> They're afraid of the devil. They're afraid somebody's gonna put a hex on them. They are a hex. <laughs> now I'm a child of God. And I'm not worried about you putting a hex on me. No. Why are you worried about people sprinkling goofy dust on you? <laughs> Some of you, the people who are worried about that are folk who are wearing these goofy bags. <laughs> and good luck bracelets. And rabbit's feet in your pocket. Lucky charm, get rid of them. And that astrology book you got in your house, get rid of it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came in upon me, the Lord lifted me up. Why be afraid 
These people, they stab themselves with imaginary daggers. They burn themselves with imaginary fires. They drown themselves in imaginary rivers. They are afraid of their shadow. They are afraid. And this is the worst of all. They are afraid after years of serving the Lord. They are afraid that after the, at the end of their life, they'll fall into some kind of temptation and the Lord will abandon them and leave them to an awful fate. My brothers and sisters, these are groundless fears. Our covenant is with God. It is an everlasting covenant ordered and sure. And I believe that no matter what goes on, I believe that God is still on the throne. And nothing can defeat God's purposes. In the days of Elijah, when the land was dry and famine reigned, God sent Elijah to a little brook of cherries for water. And he sent him to Zarephath where the widow had a little uh, a barrel of meal and a cruise of oil. And you know that meal that never ran out, that cruise of oil never ran out. Do you know that God's help never runs out? Do you know that you can, ask, you can go back to God and ask God time and time and time again? And God's love never runs out. God's mercy never runs out. God's grace never runs out. God's care never runs out. God's tenderness never runs out. It never dries up. It's like a bottomless barrel of oil that keeps coming and keeps flowing and keeps flowing. Oh, I know you were here differently. I know that there are people who say, oh yes, God's patience wears out. But I can tell you now, if God's patience had worn out, you would not be sitting here because I can tell you now that some of you have tried God's patience to the bitter end. So if God was a human being, you would have got on his last nerve a long time ago. But oh, thank God, his love is there. I hear the word of the Bible said, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. The Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, while we were in sin, Christ died for us. The Bible says that he despaired not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Shall he not through him give us all things? He delivered Job, didn't he? He delivered the Hebrew boys, didn't he? He delivered Daniel, didn't he? He delivered me, didn't he? He delivered you, didn't he? He delivered them, didn't he? He has delivered and he will deliver. And I am not afraid of the future because I know who holds the future. You know, somebody, somebody asked me once, somebody asked me once, Reverend, how can you be so sure? I, I, I was so certain. I, I didn't even if or, I, or nothing. I, if, how can you be so sure? And I can, I'll tell you why. I am so sure because I believe God. It's simple as that. Not, not because of who I am, but because I believe God. I am resting on his promises. What did Isaiah say? Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. And say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. God will come and save you. And as I read this great chapter, this great book, or this great chapter, Look what God has done for us. First of all, it speaks to our hearts. And in that, in that 27th verse, in that 26th verse, it says this Holy Spirit we have. It says that the Spirit helps our infirmities. The word infirmities can be properly translated weaknesses. The Holy Ghost helps us in our weaknesses. I'm talking about who you are. And I'm saying to some of you who are afraid, I want you to know that when the Holy Ghost comes in, this is what happens here. And it says here that, that uh, uh, we do not know uh, how to pray as we ought to pray. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession 
for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Somebody says that so you, when you're praying in the spirit and making intercession, you're speaking in tongues. That doesn't say that here. It says here that the spirit makes intercession not but with you speaking in tongues, but with, with groanings that cannot be uttered. In other words, well, you can be praying in tongues, and, and you can, and, and I do. I, somebody may say, well, the bishop is criticizing that. No, I am not. I, because I don't speak in tongues, stand up here behind this pulpit. Because every time I open my mouth, I'm not speaking in tongues. Don't mean that I do not. There are times when I get on my knees and pray, and sometimes I want to start speaking in the English and can't do it. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is there. I believe in it with all my heart, but I don't believe in making a spectacle of myself. I'm that, that is my prayer with, between me and God. I have gone into God's chamber. I have gone before the throne of grace. I'm in favor of it. But you can be, you can pray in the spirit and understand exactly what you are saying. And don't let anybody tell you that you have to pray in tongues because if you pray in English, the devil will know what you're saying and hinder your prayer. That's... I'm trying to... I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the right word. I got it, I got it. Balderdash. If you speak, if you pray in English, the devil will know what you're saying and hinder your prayer. How can you have your prayers hindered when you are in contact with God Almighty? All the devil can do is try. Oh, I know he will try, but I expect more of you than that. I expect you to go to the throne of grace. I expect you to call on God. I expect you to tell the devil to get behind me. I expect you to tell the devil to get lost. I expect you to tell the devil I am God's child. You are a liar from the beginning and I have the victory. Tell the devil goodbye. Oh, let me hurry up. Let me hurry on. I hear the music playing. When the, when the music starts playing, they're trying to tell me that my, my time is running out. But let me hear what it says. Keep on playing, son. You're, supposed to, you're doing what you're supposed to do. We know that, not only that, but we, we look at God's unfailing purpose. We know, not think, not hope, but we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And then he lines it up. You can't break one. These are five golden chains of salvation. You can't break one of them. He says here, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified what shall we say to these things if God be for us who can be against us oh my brethren let me tell you something this word failure, this word failure, it seems to me that it wasn't even in Paul's vocabulary. The apostle Paul didn't know anything about that word failure. What he didn't know was, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. There is no failure in Christ. There is no failure in God. I expect you to walk with God. I don't expect you to backslide. I don't expect you to live in sin. I expect you to live according to God's word. And if you are living in sin and claim to be saved, that's all you are doing is claiming. And what I'm talking about is not the language of fear. What I'm talking about is the language of God, the language of Christ. It is the language of courage and not cowardice. It is the language of hope and not despair. It is the language of victory and not defeat. 
It is the language of assurance yes, and not anxiety. Yes. It is the language of security yes. and not uncertainty. Yes. I tell you, when Israel was in sin and captivity, God put fire in their eyes. God put metal in their bones. God said, I'll be with you. And he delivered them. And God will deliver you. He has delivered you. And he will deliver you. And he will never fail you. He will lift you up when you're down. He will take you out of the valley of Gozum. He will put you on what we call it. He will put you on cloud nine. He will send you to seventh heaven. He will make life beautiful for you if you live for him and walk with him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And you will know that Jesus Christ is in your life. In your heart. In your soul. And so you don't, you need not fear my brothers. You need not fear my sisters. Are you caught with some kind of habit? Maybe it's drugs. I don't know. So don't be afraid. Oh, say, Reverend, you said drugs. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be remiss if I tried to tell you how many people in this congregation, men and women, whom God saved from that debilitating habit of drugs. We're not afraid of that. Oh, say, Bishop, we may get some drug addicts. That's who Jesus came to save. We may get some drug abusers. That's who Jesus came to save. Oh, Reverend, we may, we may get some folks in the church uh, who, uh, who don't uh, live like we want them to live. They, they may be homosexual. That's who Jesus came to save. Oh, oh, oh look out now. Somebody go out. Don't misunderstand me. Now somebody say, oh, Reverend, Reverend saying you can be saved and be a homosexual. You, listen, this is what I'm saying. Listen to me, what I'm saying. I'm telling you now that if God saves you, you will not practice homosexuality. But listen to what I'm saying to you. Because a person is practicing homosexuality, it does not mean that God can't save them. I know folk run from that. I don't want them. They never can get saved. That is a lie. God can save anybody. He will save anybody. All you have to do is you have to have a desire to be saved. You may say, well, Reverend, I, I, I beat my wife and I'm so sad. I don't care how many times you beat her. When God filled you with the Holy Ghost, you will not beat her anymore. Somebody said, oh, Lord, said, said uh, uh, I, I, I felt like putting some poison in that old man's uh, uh, food. That man is so mean, so low down that I don't believe God can save him. He can save him. He can save him. You may, you may think that God can't save him, but he can save him. Not only will he save him, but he'll keep him safe. And he'll keep you saved too. And you won't be putting ground glass in your husband's spaghetti because God has filled you with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing God can't do. You say, well, I'm proud. I say, I'm too proud to, to be a part of holding this church. Come on, God can bring you on down. God can make you what you ought to be. What kind of pride is that? Uh, that folk who are doctors and lawyers in this church got the Holy Ghost. Architects got the Holy Ghost. Psychologists got the Holy Ghost. Bankers got the Holy Ghost. Financiers got the Holy Ghost. Psychologists got the Holy Ghost. Psychologists got the Holy Ghost. Walking with God. So don't tell me, say, well, you know, I'm in high society. Everybody's in high society. I'm in high society. You in high society. Everybody's in high society. <laughs> Walking around talking about I'm in high society. We're all in high society. I'm in the highest society of all. You can't get no higher than God's society. You can't get no higher. You can't get no higher than that. All right, I'm through. I'm through. I've said all I can say today. But now the time has come now for me to open the doors of the church. Somebody's sitting there waiting for me. Somebody's sitting there waiting. Reverend, hurry up and get through so I can get them to come and be saved. I'm through. Get up on out of your seat right now. Get up wherever you are. God bless you there, my brother. Come on, come on. Come on up. Wherever you are. There's another brother over there. Come on. Come on. This is the day. This is the hour. There's a sister right there. Get up now. Come on down. Just see the day. Come on down. Wherever you are. Come on, pray, church. We all pray. Come on, come on. The Lord can sing. I don't care who you are. Where you come from. I believe in Jesus. God bless you, my dear. Come on, friend. By that choir scene, you ought to be getting up out of your seat, walking down these aisles right now. The Lord is speaking to you. You may be in overflow. If you're in overflow, there's somebody over there now, ready to bring you on over here and bring you down this aisle that you've got to turn your life. God bless 
that, young lady. We are still waiting. You try to win the fight. Sometimes you even toss a Tough fight. Goal. Because you're looking for what's wrong. I know there's someone else. The more you try, I know there's someone else. What's right? Somehow you can't see the light. We're just waiting for you. God bless you, my brother. Come on down. God bless you there, sister. Come on down. To find what will you do? You know you're, you're seeking Christ. And you know you feel his presence. And the Lord has brought you here today. Trust him. Where's your mother? Is it your mommy? Okay. Get your word aside. Yes. Friends come and they go. But you know that's just how. good friend Bishop David Ellis of Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to ask him to pray over this congregation as we stand before the Lord. Bishop Ellis. Are your heads with me? Holy righteous God our Father, in the matchless name of Jesus we approach your throne today. Lord I thank you 
for the word you sent us today. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the messenger. Thank you for the souls that have responded. And even those that did not respond, that are standing through this congregation, in Radio Land, in the television audience, wherever they may be, touch their hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If there be any sick among us, heal today. Heal today. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. Bless this messenger, this God-man. Continue to give him the strength. To continue to give him the power and the wisdom to bring this great gospel to us. In the name of Jesus, bless his family. Bless this church family. Let your presence ever be here night and day. Thank you, Lord. We'll bless you. We'll bless you. We'll bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated.